Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we are going to talk about Supabase as a Flutter backend. First, you are going to look at some theory and background of the Supabase, and then you are going to go to Android Studio to learn how to integrate and connect our application and project to Supabase. Specifically, we are going to show the authentication section. But if you are interested in the database, you can check the video description for a resource and you can learn the database that Supabase offers. Every developer looks for tools that simplify yet power up their projects. Choosing the right backend can be the defining decision. The Supabase is an open source alternative to Firebase. It's rapidly gaining traction in the developer community and there is a reason for that. Offering real-time databases instant APIs, authentication, and more. Supabase brings to the table robust backend features and today we are going to talk about it and we are going to see how we can integrate it into the Flutter application. What are the features of Supabase? One of its standout feature is the real-time database. It equips you with instant APIs, turning your database scheme into scalable and robust API endpoints. Supabase offers user authentication with a few steps. You can set up secure user logins, signups, and more. And Supabase's storage capabilities ensure that your app can handle files, images, and any other data seamlessly. So why choose Supabase as your backend? It's not just about features. Although they are impressive, but it is the open source feature that ensures the platform is continuously improving with community contributions. It's the scalability without the heavy costs. It's the commitment to simplifying backends without compromising the robustness. The decision between Firebase and Supabase will depend on specific needs of your project and personal or organizational preferences. Both platforms offer various development tools that can handle various use cases, but they have distinct differences. Here are some reasons why developer might choose Supabase over Firebase. One is that Supabase is open source allowing developers to view the code, contribute, and even host it on their servers. This gives more control and transparency compared to Firebase, which is a service by Google. Self-hosting. With Supabase, you have the option to self-host, giving you more control over your data and potentially reducing costs. Firebase, being a managed service, doesn't allow for this kind of flexibility. Cost. Firebase's pricing model can become expensive as your app scales, especially regarding the Firestore reads and writes and the real-time database. Supabase, when self-hosted, might offer a more predictable cost structure for some businesses. Supabase uses PostgreSQL, which is a well-established relational database with a strong track record. Firebase offers Firestore, which is a NoSQL database, and the real-time database. For projects or developers who prefer SQL-based databases, Supabase might be more appealing. Next, SQL support. With Supabase, you can write raw SQL queries, which can be a significant advantage for complex operations or for those who are already proficient in SQL. Next is community driven. Being open source Supabase, Supabase benefits from community contribution. This can mean faster implementation of new features or fixes, influenced by the needs of the community. And lastly, privacy and regulatory concerns. For projects concerned with data privacy, regulatory compliance or avoiding vendor lock-in with big tech companies Supabase's self-hosting option can be attractive. A bit of history of Supabase. It was founded by Paul Copplestone and Antonin Charrier in 2020. It was created to fulfill a gap in the market for an open-source, self-hostable Firebase alternative. 
and how its mission is to make web development simple. This is the website for Superbase. With Superbase, you have the option to use their website as your server or you can self-host, which means you can download the Superbase and you can run it on your own server. In this video, we are going to show you how to use the Superbase website. First, you need to create an account. Next, you will go to the dashboard. Inside the dashboard, you can create a new project. You can name your project and you can provide a password for your database. And you click on create new project. Now the project is setting up. You can go to the home page by clicking on this icon. In this page, you can see all the projects that you have created. You click on the project that you need. And inside this project, there are two important elements. You need to go to project settings and then you need to go to API. Inside the API, you need the URL, which is the project URL. And then you need the project API keys, which is known as Anon key. You have to copy these two because we need to use them in our Flutter project. Now let's go to pop.dev. Inside pop.dev, let's search for Superbase. As you can see, we have Superbase package, we have Superbase Flutter package, we have Superbase Auth UI package, and so on. These two packages are important, the Superbase and Superbase Flutter. You can use either of them, but the difference is that the Superbase Flutter is more friendly and has been built on top of Superbase and is adapted to the Flutter ecosystem. But the Superbase package is a pure Dart package that you can use for Flutter application as well as other applications. You can check the platform that each package supports. You can see Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, and Windows. For most of the packages of Superbase, they support almost all platforms. Now let's compare these to Firebase. Inside the pop div, we search for Firebase and we can see for some packages, they don't support all the platforms. For example, Firebase Auth, it supports only Android, iOS, macOS and web. For Firebase Messaging, it supports the same, Android, iOS, macOS and web. So one of the advantages of Superbase, if you want to create a multi-platform application, is that it supports wide range of platforms. So you need to take this also into account. We can also talk about the pricing of Superbase. The free plan supports 500 megabytes database space, up to one gigabyte of file storage, two gigabytes of bandwidth, 50 megabytes of file upload, 50,000 monthly active users, and so on. So these are included in the free plan of Superbase. More than this, you need to go to the next plan, which is the pro plan. And that's also something to think about and to consider. Now let's go to Android Studio. Inside the Android Studio, I created a Flutter application. And then I integrated Superbase into this project. And I implemented the sign up and sign in process. So first, we need to go to pubspec.yaml file. Here, we need to add Superbase underline Flutter package. You can do this manually or you can go to terminal and type Flutter pub add Superbase underline Flutter. It's going to automatically download the package and add it to your project. And also it's going to add it to pubspec.yaml file. Next, inside the main.dart, we need to import the Superbase Flutter package. And then inside the main, we need to create an instance of Superbase client and we save it to the client variable. Inside this, you need to provide two elements that we already copied from the website. One is the URL for your project and the second one is the Anon key. As you can see, we have implemented and we have added these two very important elements in plain text inside our project. This is not a secure way. If you want to do it securely, you can use Android's key store 
or iOS's keychain. These are secure store mechanisms for both platforms. Instead of storing the key and URL directly in the app, you can consider getting these elements from a secure server when your app is first launched. And then you can store them inside a key store or keychain on the device which are very secure. Or you can use a backend proxy instead of making direct calls from your Flutter app to Superbase, you can set up a backend proxy server. This server handles calls to Superbase using the Anon key and then relay data to or from the Flutter app. This way the key is never exposed on the client side, but this does introduce some extra complexity and potential latency. After this, we are going to have my app class. Inside this, we are going to create a variable of the Superbase client type. And then we are going to pass it as a parameter to the next class. Now, we have the login page and we have the login page class. And you can see that we have, again, the Superbase client variable passed to this class as well. So first we need to have two controllers for email and password because we are going to implement sign up and sign in. In the sign up function, we first have the response variable, which is of type auth response. This is going to use the client variable that we received from other class as a parameter. That's why we have the widget.client. And then we are going to use the auth and then sign up method. Inside this, we are going to provide email and password that the user entered. And then we are going to check if the response is null or it is not null. And accordingly, we are going to display a snack bar to show a message whether the sign up process was successful or not. Then we have the sign in function, which is almost similar. We are going to use sign in with password method and we provide the email and password and the same thing we are going to check the response to see if the process is successful or not and then we show the snack bar inside the build method we have simple elements we have a text field and we specify the controller as email controller that we created before this is going to be the text box that the user enters the email then we have a similar one for password. We specified password controller as the controller and as the label text, we have the password. Then we have two buttons. One says login and the other one says sign up. And accordingly, when user clicks on either one, the corresponding function that we created before is going to be executed. Now we are going to run this application in Android emulator and iOS simulator. Now the application is running on both Android emulator and iOS simulator. During the launching process for Android, you may get the error about minimum SDK version. So you need to go to Android, App, and then build.gradle. You need to open this file, and then you need to come down to default config. And for min SDK version, you need to put 19 as the minimum SDK version. Now we have both applications running. Now we are going to test the sign up process in Android. And we click on sign up. And as you can see, we have a stack bar message that shows it is successful. Now the same for iOS. And we click on sign up. And we have the message that sign up is successful. Now let's go back to Superbase website. Here we are going to select our project and from left menu we are going to select authentication. And on the left we have the users. When we click on it, we can see that both users are added to the list of users. You may notice that 
the last sign in shows waiting for verification. This is because by default, Superbase requires the user to confirm their email address. So for this, you need to go to providers and then you need to open the email section. Inside this, you can see by default, the confirm email is turned on. If you don't want this, you can turn it off and it won't require the user to confirm their email when they sign up and then you save. And here you can turn on or you can enable lots of services that you can use for authentication. For example, phone authenticating using Apple account, using Facebook account, using GitHub account, Google account, and so on. You can also check the templates. In the email template, these are the templates that are used to send the user. For instance, you can see confirm sign up. This is the email that is sent to user after the user signs up. The one that we just disabled. But if you want to use it, this is how the email looks like. You can change the template of the email as you like. There are also other templates like invite user, magic link, change email address and reset password. Now let's go back to the users section. You can see that it still waits for verification. So now we can just delete these users and then we can try again in Android and in iOS. Let's go back to Superbase and we do a reload and you can see both users are added and the last sign in is not just like before that said waiting for confirmation. It just mentions the last sign in. Now let's go back and try the sign in function. On Android, we click on login. The login is successful and on iOS is the same. We click on login and the login is successful. And that's how you connect the Flutter project with the Superbase. And we also demonstrated the sign up and sign in process in the Superbase. If you are interested in knowing and learning about the database in Superbase and also in other platforms like Firebase, like SQLite, like Hive, there is a link in the video description that you can check out. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.